In another development, Justice James Omotosho of the Federal High Court Abuja has dismissed a suit by the Philip Shaibu and others, others seeking to avoid Aswe Godalu's uh, nomination as a candidate of the People's Democratic Party in the forthcoming governorship election in Edo State. Our judiciary correspondent, Celeste Naria, reports. The deputy governor of Edo State and three others had intended to disqualify Aswe Godalu as the PDP governorship candidate for the September polls for allegedly submitting forged documents to INEC. Delivering his ruling, Justice James Omotosho held that Mr. Shwaibu and others failed to prove their case having relied on the voters' card of Mr. Igodalu alleged to be fake. The judge heard that there was no evidence beyond reasonable doubt to prove that the card was forged. More so, he added that not having a voters' card is not basics for disqualifying a governorship candidate. The court also found that Mr. Shwaibu and three others filed their case beyond the 14 days that they were made to do so. In addition, the judge held that Mr. Shwaibu lacked the legal right to challenge the outcome of the governorship primaries that produced Aswa in Kodalo, not being a participant in the same. The judge therefore dismissed the case for lacking in merits. Celestina Iria, TVC News, Abuja. I have joining me a lawyer, Evan Zufeli, for more perspective to the latest development. Good to have you join us. Thank you. Good evening. Um, a very busy day in court when it comes to uh, developments in a dose state. But let's begin yes. with that of the, I mean, both of them involved the, 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 deputy, the deputy governor, Narin, stated. Um, first of all, the court has set aside um, that impeachment and asked that he be reinstated. Yes. Uh, and the court said it was um, against the provisions of Section 188 and um, Section 35 of the 1999 Constitution. I want you to interpret that for us. Yes, uh, Section 188 has to do with the modern procedure for impeaching a deputy governor. And if you have to do that, you have to follow procedures. Um, the State House of Assembly uh, has to you know, come up with um, a notice to that effect. The notice is served. Um, the deputy governor is supposed to you know, respond, and then there's all a set up a uh, seven-man committee. Seven-man committee is supposed to look into that within 90 days, three months. And then when they make a recommendation to the House, then the House will take it up from there before the impeachment. But if you look at the steps and the processes and procedures, they overstepped because they were in a hurry to pu push him out. And that is why you notice that all through around the country, all deputy governors that have been impeached, the court has always restated them because usually it is done in bad faith, they are in a rush to ensure that the deputy governor goes down, but you will never see them constitute themselves to impeach a governor. It's only a deputy governor that can be impeached because that tells you that once a deputy governor falls out with the governor, the next thing the governor begins to influence the state house of assembly, which is wrong. Parliament should be independent. Parliament should be able to stop the governor you know, from uh, you know, concocting plan to take down the, his deputy. Parliament should be the, the body that should stop that. But unfortunately in Nigeria, Parliament will give in. Sometimes they, are, they won't take gratification to do that. And okay? they're supposed to be the check and balance. But th yes. there, is, there is a part of that judgment. Uh, I know that the, the Edo State government say, say they have now appealed, yes. appealed that judgment. But where does that leave the Inspector General of Police who have been asked to reinstate the security detail? of the deputy governor, does he do that now, wait for that appeal? No. The, once there is um, a motion to stay execution of the mm. judgment, every part of the judgment, they have to wait. Okay. Now, the irony of it is that, I mean, the tenure of the deputy governor and the substantive governor is almost over. And when, by the time you get to the Court of Appeal, and that is the time of the Court of Appeal, and maybe they now go to the Supreme Court. Before they get to the Supreme Court, the tenure would have been over. But the Should good thing is that, case. yeah, but the good thing is that on record, on record, it means that he completed his term as a deputy governor, okay, and all his salaries and emolument from April when he was impeached will be paid according to the orders of the court. Mm. And every entitlement, everything, even after leaving office, yes, uh, that he's entitled to, he continues to receive. Yes, it, that if he's if the appeal court and Supreme Court rules in his favor. Yes, but I also wanted to ask you about this latest one, which is that of um, the Justice James Amotosho, who. Um, dismissed the, the suit by, again, Philip Shaibu, you know, to void Igudalo's nomination. Yeah. Um, some are saying that he has not been reinstated. I want to get, because there is a bit of conf conflict in, in terms of, you know. No, he's not been reinstated. The court, the, 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 the court said that 
Um, he, do, he, he was not part of those. If you look at the Electoral Act, the Electoral Act said that if you have to challenge primaries mm. for, to disqualify a candidate or whatsoever, I think, you must be a participant in that primaries. You understand? Remember that Shwaibu did his own separate. He went to a different location to conduct his mm. and then came out as a winner. Why the PDP conducted another one where Aswai Gudalo came out as a... So the ruling of the court is that um, for the fact that he was not a candidate in the, the election that produced Aswai Gudalo, which the Central Working Committee of the party endorsed, that he cannot, he cannot uh, call for the disqualification. Mm. That's exactly what they... But the, the challenge here is that there was a, an earlier judgment by Justice Inyangeko that had nullified that primary. Now, both of them, I, I believe, are, are courts of coordinate jurisdiction. And so where does that leave that previous judgment? It's not like um, the Aswe Godalo and, and, and PDP did, you know, appeal that judgment. They went for a fresh judgment. And so where does that leave that previous judgment? Yeah, it's part of the issues we, we're talking about, about having conflicting judgment of courts. But the truth is that when you look at it clearly, you look at which of the courts in question, okay, is the appropriate court to have undertaken the question. When you, when you um, uh, look at the laws, all pre-election matters will go to the Federal High Court. Okay, all pre-election matters go to the Federal High Court. And then the Federal High Court that will determine you know, the case on that reference. And that is what it is. So, um, Both this, of them are federal high courts. Yes, th both of them are both federal. Both of them are federal high courts. Both of them are federal high courts. But, you know, the details, they were not brought in. They were not brought before the federal high court on the same issues. There were different so, issues. And that's because I, I, we don't there have were, to let you go. We have just a few minutes. There were different, I, there were different issues. Not, one were not of the them issues. was the primary yes. that produced Igodalo. That was nullified by Justice Inyangeko. Yes. Now, this is a different issue of... Uh, people's the, the 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 nomination. They say he forged his his um, voters card and all of that. Yes, I has. A... So where does that? Because again, people are saying that he has been reinstated as the the candidate of the PDP. But there is a previous judgment. Both of them are federal high courts. Where does that leave that leave Aswego Dalu? Well, well, the last judgment that is the one on ground, the one we're talking about, I already had brought him back. I mean, the pronouncement mm. is that it cannot be, it's not disqualified mm. because Shoaibu did not, right. you know, did, did not contest that election. Mm. He went on a voyage of his own to contest an election which is different from the one that the party endorsed. Okay? So, whichever way it goes, uh, when they get to the Court of Appeal, the Court of Appeal will decide whether the first is the rightful judgment or the one that came before. Interesting but I know they are going on appeal already. We continue to see these conflicting judgments from, you know, different courts. Thank you so much for your time. Evans Ophelia, I'm a lawyer. Always a Thank pleasure to have you. Thank you very much. Thank you.